Okay, now going back to the nucleus, we focus on the nucleus and the black hole that it contains. The nucleus of our galaxy is in the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. So if you want to look at, if you want to be able to see the nucleus of the galaxy, what you do is wait for summer months and look up in the sky towards the constellation Sagittarius, and which is a summer constellation. And just keep looking towards that direction, and that's going to be in the direction of the center of the galaxy. You see? So you can, you can see the center of our galaxy only during summer months. Because during winter months, it's up during the daytime. And it's, uh, you can't see it during the daytime. You see, it's too, the sun is too bright. So you've got to wait for summer. You see? So this is a view of the galactic center. You see all the energy emitted from the center? And we start blowing it up, blowing it up. A close-up view shows a more luminous region at the galactic center, you see? Then we, we blow it up even more. An extreme close-up view centered on the Sagittarius A. You see here? They call that Sagittarius A because it's in the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. And that radio source, they call it the Sag A. Right there. You see? So an extreme close-up view centered on the Sagittarius A, a radio source at the very center of the Milky Way galaxy, shows hundreds of stars which within one light year. You see, within one light year, there's a hundreds of stars. And then what's happening is these hundred stars, they're all touching each other, you know, bumping and everything. And it's very densely populated. And then the center has a black hole that's gulping this up and this all this energy. And then it's emitting this extreme energy. So it contains lots of stars compacted in a small space, rapidly revolving around the central, supermassive black hole. Okay? Many galaxies are now believed to house these kinds of black holes at their centers, and these are called <coughs> supermassive black holes. The other black holes that we studied, uh, the other, I think it was Monday, right? Uh, those are called regular black holes. When a, a black, uh, star dies, and then it ends up as a black hole. Those guys have masses of roughly 10 to 20 solar masses. These guys have masses hundreds of millions of times mass of the sun. They are formed by the continual accumulation of mass at the centers of galaxies. When a bunch of stars die, and then more and more die, and then it starts collapsing, collapsing, and then the, the black hole starts growing larger, like a blob. Okay? It reminds me of that scary movie that I watched when I was young. This art the um, blob came from outer space. It's kind of a low budget movie, but it was this thing, and then it was eating people up and growing um, as it kept eating. Sci fi thriller. Example Milky Way has uh, what we estimate to be a 4 million solar mass black hole. Four times, 4 million times the mass of the sun. Andromeda Galaxy has a 30 million solar mass black hole, even bigger. M87 is a galaxy. It's in, the, uh, it's in Virgo, the supercluster Virgo, and it has a 3 billion solar mass black hole. Oh, what I did here is I calculated... Uh, I did a rough calculation. This black hole in Virgo, which is 3 billion solar masses, I estimated what its Schwarzschild radius would be. And it came out to be 60 AUs. 60 AUs. That means the size of that black hole would eat anything within 60 AU from the center. Well, that's bigger than our solar system, you know. That's, that's bigger than, farther away than Pluto is from the sun. So anything within... 60 AUs, it just gulps it down, gulps it down, and then it just keeps b getting bigger. This is the supermassive black hole at the center of uh, the M87. Look how energetic that is. It's huge. There's a whole class of galaxies with super energetic centers. These are called quasars. You might have heard of those terms. 
okay? Uh, Quasar is a whole category of galaxies with super, super massive, super energetic black holes at their center, and we give these guys the name of uh, Quasar. I'm gonna go back a couple slides and show you a couple other things for black hole. We, the other day I showed you this when we were talking about a rotating black hole. I had a couple things to show you. This one is another visual of that. This is a rotating black hole. Kind of, they're showing you the black hole and the event horizon. And then the region around it is the ergo, ergo region. So uh, it's, the visual is kind of like taking a milk or something and stirring it, you know? And then you have the center is the black hole that forms. So it's like a visual. This, what they're showing you here is what would happen to a clock as it starts to go inside of a black hole, you see? So not only what would happen to the clock, but also what would happen to the spaceship, you see? Remember we talked about spaghettification? It gets longer, so it starts getting stretched. The other thing that would happen is what's happening to the clock. This is the clock on the spaceship far from the black hole. This is the clock on the spaceship going into the black hole. Okay, so they both start out at 6 o'clock, 6.10, 6.08, okay? 6.20, okay? 6.30, 6.15. Okay? So what's happening? The clock on the spaceship is slowing down. Okay, the gravitational field actually slows down time. Well, once you fall, once you fall in there, the clock stops basically ticking and your life ends. <laughs> okay, so that's a good um, illustration. This is another one like that. Black hole, accretion disk, event horizon, and then a couple other stuff like that. So I wanted to show you that. These supermassive black holes behave exactly the same as the other black holes. They also suck you in. And if there was a, su a rotating supermassive black hole, you might also be able to do time travel with that. It's just going to be much, much heavier, you know. 